Good morning, my brothers and sisters, and I'm so glad you've joined me on this Thursday. We are today reading one of the three last chapters of the book of Genesis. You may remember this, this interesting theme that has played itself out again and again in different generations of the tension between an elder sibling who was expected to receive two-thirds of the inheritance, who was expected to be the primary carer of his family name, carrier of his family name, and carer for his mother and his sisters after his father passed away. The tension between that expectation of the oldest son, and in many cases, a younger child playing a prominent role. Today we read on a, about a continuation of this theme. We're going to pick up at the 10th verse of the 48th chapter, reading about Jacob, who's now an elderly man. Jacob was half blind because of his age and could hardly see. So Joseph, that's Jacob's son. So Joseph brought the boys close to him, and Jacob kissed and embraced them. Then Jacob said to Joseph, I never thought I would see your face again, but now God has let me see your children too. Joseph moved the boys who were at their grandfather's knees, and he bowed with his face to the ground. Then he positioned the boys in front of Jacob. With his right hand he directed Ephraim towards Jacob's left hand, and with his left hand he put Manasseh at Jacob's right hand. But Jacob crossed his arms and reached out to lay his hands on the boy's head. He put his right hand on the head of Ephraim, though he was the younger boy, and his left hand on the head of Manasseh, though he was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, May the God who before my grandfather Abraham, my father Isaac, walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this very day, the angel who has redeemed me from all harm, may he bless these boys. May he preserve my name and the names of Abraham and Isaac, and may their descendants multiply great, greatly throughout the earth. But Joseph was upset when he saw that his father had placed his right hand on Ephraim's head. So Joseph lifted it to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. No, my father, he said, this is the firstborn. Put your hand right here on his head. But his father refused. I know, my son. I know, he replied. Manasseh will also become a great people, but his younger brother will become even greater, and his descendants will become a great multitude. It's interesting that the person who is sensitive to this tension between this elder brother and this younger brother is Jacob. Jacob, it's, it's slightly unusual because he's giving his blessing not to his children, but to Joseph's children, to his grandchildren. But it's interesting, as I said, that it's Jacob who's sensitive to this possible tension between the expectations of the eldest child and in cases where, you, where a younger sibling surpasses the elder. The reason it's fascinating is because this is exactly, you may remember, what happened with Jacob when Jacob was younger. Jacob is now an elderly man on his deathbed, but he was born as the second child, the second of a set of twin boys that his parents had. He was the heel grabber. He was the one who was trying to surpass his older brother Esau. He was the one who, who before he turned his life around, um, <laughs> tried to, or tricked his brother in trading away his birthright so that Jacob could try to pull in front. He was the one who tricked his father on his father's deathbed, trying to get the blessing that was actually meant for the older brother. 
And now he seems to have an increased sensitivity to this possible tension. Manasseh will also become a great people. The older brother will also become a great people, he said. But his younger brother will become even greater, and his descendants will become a multitude of nations. In other words, what we see in Jacob is this sensitivity to the the potential ramifications and hurt feelings between these different brothers. And he ensures that both are blessed, that both know they're cared for, even if he's been told by God that the younger will achieve more, he doesn't cut either one out. Have you heard the, the phrase in our pop culture that hurt people hurt people? People who've been hurt will go on to hurt others. There is truth to it, but today we're reading about someone who was very hurt, who was involved in hurting others, who faced the ramifications of that. In other words, we see someone who was very wounded, Jacob, and wounded in large part because of the tension between expectations for older and younger brothers. And this didn't cause him to hurt others his whole life. As a matter of fact, it caused him to be better prepared to not hurt others. I've mentioned before the the book, The Wounded Healer by Henry Nouwen. This book talks about how oftentimes it is people who've been most wounded who are best equipped to care for others. I've I've seen this in my life. I've seen um, the most effective group I've ever seen for people who are grieving the loss of their spouses was run by someone who two times had a husband die to cancer. One of the most effective um, uh, um, addiction counselors who I've ever had a chance to know is someone who himself struggled with addiction for years. Often we, we see people who are wounded and we think, well, they've wasted their chance. We, may, we could have looked at, at Jacob and said, look, this is someone who has had so much emotional conflict about being the younger child and, and surpassing his older brother that he could never have the sensitivity. But that's, that's wrong. Instead, it seems to have created this sensitivity in him for his grandchildren. So I say all this. And I have a question for you. Where have you been wounded? Where have you been hurt? Where have things gone awry in your life? And then second of all, who in your life has been hurt that same way and is maybe struggling with those wounds right now? Maybe they're open and fresh wounds for someone else. Who in your life is struggling the same way that you have once struggled? Would it be possible for you to reflect on how you were hurt and use that to build up your empathy, to reflect on how you made it through challenges and use that to provide, to provide direction for others? In other words, how can you just as Jacob did, serve as a wounded healer for someone else. Someone who has been hurt yourself, but is not going to waste that hurt, but instead use it to help guide others through challenging periods in their lives. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Dear God, we Pray for all those who've been hurt and wounded. We pray that in each of our lives, you give us insight into places where our hurt and our pain and our past trauma can be transformed and redeemed to serve and show your path and show your love and your grace and your presence to those around us. God, bless us even through the places where we've been hurt. 
Bless us that we may bless others in your name. In that holy name we pray. Amen.